His name is Gareth And he rips bits His name is Gareth Hence why it's Gareth's Good evening and welcome. This is Gareth's improvised stand-up comedy. The way this works is that people send in suggestions that I have not seen and I riff on them live for your pleasure. My name is Gareth. I riff. It's Gareth's. There you go. Uh, that brings us to our first segment, which is Riffs Just In. Uh, every week, I riff on three crazy news stories that my producer has picked out. Uh, and, uh, and here we go. Let's do this shit. So first one is Australian police charge man in alleged international table tennis match fixing syndicate. Uh, and that's all we get. Uh, okay, so there, so there is a table, an international table tennis match. Fi- like, what is your, if you're internationally fixing table tennis matches, what's the, what's the upside? You're going to make what? Thirty dollars? There just can't. There's more. There's better sports. This can't be. You know what I mean? Who's who overtakes rumpus room activities on an international scale to be like, that's it. We'll get them where it hurts. Table tennis. You know, like I think I'm pretty sure. Ta- I love ping pong. By the way, table tennis, ping ping pong. Let's do this properly. I think there's a lot of terms that Americans have changed and. Uh, it made worse. I like ping pong better. It's, you know, ping pong, ping pong. I just think that's better than table tennis, you know? It just feels table... I mean, table tennis is accurate. just feels fucking weird, you know? feel It just... It's strange. It's strange. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're rigging table tennis matches, there's... I mean, I'm sure the, the amount of hours you're working do not equate to the amount of money that you're making. It's not the World Cup. It's table tennis, right? Tab- Why don't we do that for, like, pool? Why don't we call pool, like, table soccer? You know? Wouldn't that work? I mean, it's, I guess it's not soccer, but, you know, th- I just think involving table is stupid. Uh, okay, all right. Um, there's not much meat on the bone there for me. Um, conspiracy theorists on social media wonder if Chinese troops have invaded Maine. Residents of tiny Robinston are getting calls from around the country asking if uh, last week's earthquake was a bunker bombing, was a bunker bombing bomb blast. Um, Okay, so this is crazy. Um, I mean, if the Chinese troops were to invade America, they would probably go for our mainland, which is Maine. So that would make sense. But I also, I wonder, uh, uh, that's how deep into the anus of conspiracy theories we now are. We're so lost, we're so lost that an earthquake means the Chinese invaded. I lived in L.A. I I mean, you know, I've lived in L.A. for ages, and I've had dozens of earthquakes. Never once have I been like, that's Chinese foot soldiers. That's what that is, you know? But if there is a country that can fabricate earthquakes, aside from America, it would be the Chinese, um, without question. But, uh, I, yeah, we really, I mean, we just have this issue in America now and the world, but really America, where re- the real answer just will not satiate us. We will not be satisfied by the real answer, you know, like earthqu- like an earthquake where, like, it's Chinese troops, you know, uh, like a volcano, we just, th- I mean, I mean, we just blame everything on anything else, you know, uh, like wind, that's not wind, that's everyone farting. A bunch of Chinese people came here to fart, that's why we've got wind. This hurricane is a ton of Chinese farts. That's what we should do. Let's just blame everything, uh, every natural disaster, everything on the Chinese. I think that'll go really well. I don't see a downside to that, right? You know, if it's too sunny, it's the Chinese. If it's too dark, goddamn the Chinese. They put their coats over the sun. Those bastards. Um, so, yeah. So, I, you know, there's, I, let's, let's, just, let's just say there was an earthquake. Wouldn't that make sense? Isn't that? That works. I know it's in Maine. It's a little strange, but that's what fracking does. Fracking, yeah, I believe, I, I don't know if that's something I made up or I read, but I believe fracking causes earthquakes. Holy shit, this one is tiny. Hold on. Uh, 
Billionaire does, denies harassing neighbor with Gilligan's Island music in dispute. Well, there's a little bit to the article, but let's start off by saying fantastic tactic. If you are going to enter a neighbor fight, Gilligan's Island on repeat, very solid, very solid. Uh, Los Angeles renowned bond investor Bill Gross had trouble uh, remembering dates, details prior to his testimony when he took the stand Monday in a civil harassment suit. However, Gross was certain of one thing. That, ne that neither he nor his life partner, former professional tennis player Emmy Schwartz, had harassed their next-door neighbor by playing loud music at night while they were trying to sleep, including and especially the song from Gilligan's Island. Well, I mean, if the, the thing about the song from Gilligan's Island is it, if, if you are going to torture someone, that's a great song to do it with because it is very repetitive and it's very short. Like, they used to do that with sitcoms. The sitcom intro used to explain everything, you know? It would just be like, we got a dad, we got a mom, and they didn't get along. So then they went out and they got two people to bring along. It's the polygamists, you know? Or it was just like, he's a sloppy guy, she's a clean person, these two live together, could it be worse, and here we are, you know? It was just like very catchy, just straight, and Gilligan's Island was the best one. It was just like, uh, just sit right back and I'll tell the tale, a tale of a fateful ship. Decided, did it, did it, you know, on a three-hour trip. It was something like that. But uh, but that is so repetitive. Drives your neighbor crazy. I used to have a neighbor who would just shout through the walls, at not, not having nothing to do with me, sometimes having to do with me. Other times she would just scream. She would just scream one time. One time I got a glimpse into her apartment, and the only thing I saw was a skeleton. So I was like, I'm going to leave her alone. But uh, but she would just scream. She would just bloody murder top of her lungs, just, ah, ah, you know. And sometimes I'd be watching TV at, like, say, a 32 volume. And she would bang on the wall and scream. And what I would do eventually, I decided that trying to communicate was useless. So I did use the power of a different medium. I used a movie. I would put on John Wick. And I would go to like the third action scene where it's like they're in a club and the music is just like. <laughs> and then there's just gunfights and just slamming dudes heads into shit, you know, just beating the shit out of each other. And I would take that volume to about a 92, very loud. And then so I would just play that for two to three minutes and just sort of, you know, flex the muscles, remind my neighbor, hey, I don't cash out at 32. That's not the the peak of this volume on this Samsung. No, these go to 11. I could take this to 90 fucking five if I want, and I would crank it up, and she would lose her mind. But when the three minutes were over, I'd turn it back down and go back to whatever I was watching, and it would stop. Um, so, I mean, that's why Gilligan's Island is also good. That's good if you're going to leave the house and you want something just to repeat while you're gone, Gilligan's Island. My situation, John Wick, was pretty solid. So uh, so there you go. All right, so those are the uh, riff just, uh, riffs just in. This week's suggestions, and this week we have a very special celebrity guest suggestion. We have Ryan Sickler. I don't know if you know who Ryan Sickler is. Ryan Sickler is a great podcast called The Honeydew. Uh, he's at Ryan Sickler on all social media platforms. So go give that guy a follow. Hell of a guy. Uh, someday I'll be on The Honeydew. But until then, let's do this shit suggestions. Okay, first suggestion from you guys. Ugg Boots. I think Ugg boots are great because Ugg is like what I feel like the people who wear Ugg boots say a lot, you know? Like, do you want to go to brunch? Like, ugh, Ugg. I mean, I do want to go to brunch, but I don't necessarily, you know? Um, but it just feels like Ugg culture. Like, Ugg is such a gross name, like Ugg, you know? How about yay boots? No, it had to be Ugg, you know? Which I just feel like is the disposition of the wealthy who wear those. You know, the people who complain about everything, right? If you wear Ugg boots, it's right on for your attitude because I'm sure you bitch about everything. Ugh, where's the waiter? Ugh, traffic is terrible. Ugh, I couldn't park. Ugh, my boots are made of wool. Ugh, or cashmere, whatever the fuck's inside of them. I'm too poor to touch an Ugg boot. I do not have access to the Ugg boots. Never had my foot inside of an Ugg boot, never touched an Ugg boot. No interest. No interest in this boot shit. Right? If you're going to wear a boot, wear a welly. All right? Wear a nice English welly. That's an up-to-the-knee rubber boot. Why can't I just start rocking those if people can walk around town in Ugg boots? Why can't I kick it with wellies? You know what I mean? 
That's the kind of vibe I want to give off of. Just walk around in plaid with a net over my shoulder wearing a set of wellies. Basically look like I'm a cranberry farmer, right? Take your Ugg boots and shove them up your ass. Up my ass? Ugg. Yeah, Ugg, indeed. So, there you go. That's smug boot comedy for you. Uh, auditions for the next Spider-Man villain. Man, I don't know anything about... I don't know enough to know who the next... I, I don't know who's been the villain in Spider-Man. Who, like, who who else? I, I don't... I mean, well, what takes out spiders? You know? Raid Man? How about Raid Man? How about Raid Man? And he takes out spiders. And he's got a very special raid suit... And he, when he lifts his arms up, no, you know what? She, that's right, progressive, female villain. She's called Raid Lady, okay? Not a great name, but we're sticking with it, okay? So she's Raid Lady. Every time she lifts her arms, it just tss, DDT shoots out, you know? That'll take out Spider-Man. That'll take out a bunch of people, right? She, I mean, that's the deal with Raid, right? Raid, Raid is like, you know, Raid does not ask for dimensions. Raid is just, you just spray the shit out of it. So why don't we just have Raid Lady? Or we could call her Raidy, right? Or how about Lady Raid? That's better. Lady Raid is her name. Final answer. Okay, auditions for the next Spider-Man villain. Uh, this is uh, Lady Raid, okay? Lady Raid auditioning for the next Spider-Man. Oh, hello, Spider-Man. Interesting. I didn't think I'd find you up here on the top of a building. Listen, Lady Raid, you've got to relax. You've done too much to this city, whatever it's called. It's not Gotham or the Superman city. It's another city. Well, Spider-Man, I guess you've just got everything under control again, don't you? Just because you can shoot little jism webs out of your wrists and such? That's right, Lady Raid. It's over. So why don't you get out of town? I will. There's just one more thing. Do I have B.O.? Tss, Raid, 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 tss, Raid, 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 tss. Oh, Lady Raid, no! <laughs> oh, it's the only thing that takes out spiders and small insects like me and maybe mosquitoes and gnats and other bugs. Not bed bugs, because they're so resilient. That's right, Spider-Man. Ha! And I've stopped the raid. Now, I want you to tell me where the key to the city is. The key to the city? What does that have to do with anything? Ah, tss, ah, no, stop, stop. Ah, all right. Are you happy now? Where's the key to the city? I'll tell you. I'll tell you just no more lifting your arms, Lady Raid. Well, looks like Lady Raid has put you on notice, Spider Boy. There you go. Okay, so that's Lady Raid, and she, uh, she's a very hot character. Uh, the suit will be black and gray. And um, as far as casting goes, I see me. I see myself playing that part. Uh, okay, Secret Santa. Next suggestion is the Secret Santa. Secret Santa is, uh, well, I, I've never been like, I mean, I've worked in a lot of offices, but I've never worked in like an office that has like an office Christmas party, or I've never worked in an office for like, well, the same office for like a year. Uh, you know, normally my gigs are a little different. I have been involved in a Secret Santa before, but I think we ended up telling people who the Secret Santa was. If you're in a situation where you can just give someone a gift and have no culpability, they'll never know, what a great charm position that is to be in. You can get them anything, right? Just get them, like, some pens. Just get them two pens. Just get them two big pens, wrap them up, you know? And then you're just like, oh, my God, concert tickets. And someone's like, I got two pens. And you're like, boy, I don't know who gave you that shit gift. Man, if only this wasn't a secretive Santa thing. It's like, yeah, I know. I wish I knew who just gave me two pens. Meanwhile, I gave someone concert tickets. Yeah, I got those concert tickets. So thank you for that. I can't believe some son of a bitch just gave you two pens. Yeah, two big pens. Probably worth five bucks. Man, if we catch the person who did that, I say we rough them up. Yeah. You know, you're talking a lot like you hate this two pen person. Hey, I hate the principal, man. I hate the principal of someone who gave two pens. This is Christmas for fuck's sake. You dig deep. I mean, I got concert tickets. Where's the car man that? And you get two pens? Yeah. It's bullshit. Yeah. I didn't do it, just to be clear. No, I didn't think you did until you said that. Well, I, I mean, I didn't. I don't even know where I'd get two pens. What are you talking about? I'm just saying I don't even know where I'd get two pens. You'd get two pens at most grocery stores. Well, I, what do I know? I always steer clear of that aisle. 
I don't, but so what do I know? It feels like you're the one who got the two pens. I got the two pens? I? Me? Gave you two pens. Well, 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 I should have given you a third pen so you could jot down all your bullshit. Because <laughs> that is cuckoo bananas, my friend. I would never just get someone two pens. You did it, didn't you? I did it. But I can't wait to see Rod Stewart. Fuck face. Woo! You know, that's the deal, right? All right. Oh, shit, edibles. Good one. Um, yeah, edibles. Well, you know, the thing, this is the thing, right? I've lived long enough to have seen the weed culture completely get flipped on its head. I've seen it go from, you know, like, you cannot get weed, you do not want to be caught with weed, to where the laws sort of loose, loosen a little bit, to now where you can just, like, smoke joints on the street and nobody gives a shit in Los Angeles, which is fucking great. But uh, I, I, the, the tr I mean, uh, the truth is when I first moved to Los Angeles, you had to do the parking lot weed deal, you know what I mean? People don't remember this shit. It used to fucking suck. You used to have to go meet some dude in a parking lot. Right? And the dude would always be late. You needed the person more than the person needed you. Those situations never work out great. You know, I would call my weed dealer. I'd be like, hey, when can we meet? He'd be like, 545, CVS parking lot. I'd be like, boom, see you there. 545, I'm there, 542. Is he here? Maybe he's early. What a sucker. What a sucker. Maybe my weed dealer's early. Maybe he wanted to make a good impression. No, he has the weed. He's not early. He's late. How late? Real late. It's like 6.45, and you're like, hey, you close? And then at like 7.10, you get a text that's like, five minutes. That's 30 minutes later. But you didn't give a shit. You waited. And then you went into the Honda Civic that he drove. You sat in the passenger seat. You took a roll around the block. And the weed he would have would just be a bag of weed. You never were like, what kind of indica is it? Is it a sleepy indica? No, it was weed. It was bag of weed. It was whatever weed he had went. That's what you got. You didn't know if it was indica. You didn't know if it was sativa. I didn't know the indica or sativa existed. I didn't know there were different strains. You just meet some shady fucker in a parking lot, just get a bag of seeds and stems, and you would fucking be so goddamn grateful. And it's gone from that to now when you go in the weed store, you're like, so walk me through the strawberry cuff. Uh, how many crystals are on it, and what is the vocalization the marijuana has? You know, you just ask crazy shit. Can I talk to the weed's parents? Is that possible? I'd just like to see what kind of family it came from. You know, you're inspecting nugs of weed like it's a cow entered at the Blue Ribbon State Fair. You know, you're just like lifting up the weed's balls like, I like what I see under here. This weed has a big future. You know, so you went from that situation where you never knew what kind of fucking pot you were getting to today. Right. And that brings us to the suggestion of edibles. Edibles. I mean, when I used to have to eat edibles, they were called disco biscuits and you didn't know what the fuck was going to happen. You didn't know who made them, what they put in them. All you knew is buckle the fuck up. Right. You'd eat one brownie. If it wasn't good enough, you'd eat another, but it normally was. And normally, if you ate a second, you regretted it because it would take long enough for the first one to hit you after you ate the second one, and then you'd be like, it's go time. I'm going to go ride the snake in a desert like Jim Morrison. But edibles are amazing. Uh, eating marijuana, ingesting marijuana can be a much differ different experience. It's very psychoactive. It really can feel at times like you're tripping. You know, so you've got to know the edibles. You got to have edible specificity. If you like a cookie, stick with the cookie. No need to go out there sampling. You know, you can always take more. You can always take more. But sometimes with these edibles, you eat one and you're fucking gone. I remember I got my brother uh, some weed uh, edibles once, and it was like uh, Reese's peanut butter cups. It was like Weed's peanut butter cups or whatever the fuck it's called, right? And he ate those, and he was gonna work on his deck. He's a general contractor. And he said he sat on his deck after he ate them, just looking at stuff and realizing he couldn't do it. Like, that's how strong they were. I've had edible experiences that take you far beyond what you expect. I mean, I told a story on the dollop about how I ate, I, ate, I, I accidentally traveled with all this fucking uh, chocolate. And when I was leaving Australia... I was like, oh, shit, I found it, and I just ate it. I was like, I got to get rid of this, and I just was like, I'll eat it. And man, oh, man, did I trip my balls off. I was at the airport like, where am I? I, was, I didn't tell Dave from the dollar. I didn't tell Dave that I'd taken anything. I didn't tell him anything. I just slowly tripped my balls off in the Sydney airport for like three hours. 
had no clue what was going on, no frame of reference, <coughs> was completely lost. It was a nightmare. But there are the times where it's the best, you know? There are times where you can eat an edible and, mwah, que bella, you know? So edibles are dicey. Be careful. Get If you find one you like, stick with them. And remember, just like most things, you can always take more, not less. Okay. The game doorknob I grew up playing. Yes, yes, yes. I asked for this suggestion last week. Okay, so this is one of these things that you believe everybody in the United States played when you grow up. And then as you get older, you realize nobody else played this game. So the game was called Doorknob, okay? And how it would work is this. You and a few of your friends would be hanging out, and if someone farted, you would say Doorknob. Then that person would have to run and touch a doorknob. Now, in the interim, when they're racing to the doorknob, you get to punch them. So you would be punching them, you would be blocking doorknobs, right? But if the person farted and said safety, couldn't do anything to them. So you would fart and you'd say safety, you'd be okay. But if you farted and didn't say safety and someone said doorknob, you could pound them. And then I remember being in college and someone farted and I was like, doorknob! <laughs> and everyone was like, what's your deal? Why are you hitting Chad? He farted. And I'm like, because Chad farted, like you said. And we... And I said doorknob, and they're like, what the fuck does doorknob mean? I was like, Chad has to touch a doorknob, <laughs> and I can hit him. And then as I'm saying it, I'm like, what am I saying to these people that I want to be my new friends? You know, I'm just like, I, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I don't, he didn't say safety. And people are like, go to a different dorm. And I'm like, <laughs> but it, maybe we could do it here. And everyone's like, get out. And I'm like, but... <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I'll leave, but I'm going to touch the doorknob. <laughs> remember, from remember from before when I had... Uh, it was good to meet everybody. Good to... Thank you, guys. Th good, to, good to meet you all. Thank you to meet you. Thank you to meet you. Why do I thank you to meet you? Thank you to meet me. Thank you to meet me. Meet you to thank me. Meet you to thank... Thank you to meet me. Meet me to thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank me. Don't thank me. Thank you. Not you. I'm thanking you for meeting me. I don't need to say thank you, though. I'm just saying good to meet you all. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, safety. So that was, that was the game we would play. That was Doorknob. And, uh, boy... What a stupid game. But even other people from Wisconsin haven't heard of it. You know, I would say to people in Wisconsin, I'd be like, man, people in Boston don't know about doorknob. And they'd go, what's doorknob? I'd be like, when you fart, you have to... Never mind. Never mind. So, yeah, that was doorknob. That was doorknob. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a pretty epic story. So the suggestion is when Pam got high. Uh, my mother, Pam... Uh, I, like I said, in high school, I was a, a pot smoker. Uh, I tempered it a bit for a little while, but then it was the summer, I think, maybe before I was going into college. I th eh, maybe not. Might have been, might have been going into my senior year, something like that. I'd been smoking pot with my buddy Bill, and uh, and then I decided that uh, uh, we would go to my place. We went to my place. My mother and my aunt are there, and my mother says to me. Do you, do you have any pot? And I said, do I have any pot? Yes, I do. Why? You're not going to take it away from me, are you? She said, no. Your aunt and I would like to have some. I said, you want pot? She said, yeah, that's right. I said, yeah, that's right. She said, yeah, that's right. I said, well, I'll roll you a joint. So I roll a fucking fat joint, right? Sit at a table with my mother and my aunt, and I light it up. I take a hit, and then I hand it to them. Now, this is where I made my first mistake. I was thinking to myself, I want to make sure they get high because I don't know if I'm going to have this opportunity again. You know, who knows the next time your mother's going to ask if you have pot. So I'm like, I'm going to get them real high. Again, I don't know what I was thinking. That was just my plan. So they were smoking like, and I'd be like, pass it to her. And then I'd be like, yeah, pass it to her. And she'd be like, I'd be like, hold that in, pass it to her. Hold that in, pass it to her. Hold that in, pass it to her. Hold that, hold, hold, you know, till finally they smoked it all. Both of them. Well, I don't feel anything. I don't feel anything. I said, yeah, well, you might not right away, right? A little bit of time goes by. I'm also stoned. They go away. 
And then I'm eventually saying to my Bill in my basement, we're having a cigarette, and I go, I wonder where my mother is. So I go upstairs to see how everyone's doing, and I hear my mother having a conversation with someone on the couch. So I walk in to see who she's talking to. Well, she's talking to nobody. She's talking to herself. She's just literally on the couch going, oh, yes, but we have to. We can't. Oh, boy. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. And I go, Mom, what is going on? And she goes, oh, Garfi, I've never felt so awful. And I go, well, that's not good. I go, uh, do you think it's the pot? She goes, yes, it's definitely the pot. I said, what are you feeling? She goes, I just want it to end. I was like, okay. Let's put a pin in this. I'll go talk to my aunt. I go talk to my aunt. My aunt is mean, mean, mean. I don't feel anything. I said, okay, well, that's good because mom's on the couch tripping. She's talking to some ghosts or some shit. She goes, well, I don't feel anything. I don't know what she's talking about. And I go, okay, you know. She goes, you know you're the reason your father's not here, don't you? And I said, what the fuck did you just say? You stoned asshole, what? She goes, you know you're the reason your father's no longer here, don't you? And I said, I don't think I can have this conversation. So I went to my basement. I was fucking pissed. I waited until my mother came to her senses, which was a couple hours later. She was finally like, uh, I think I could have a cup of tea. I was like, great. Tea is going to be the spinach that gets this Popeye out of this situation. So I was like loading her up with tea. And I couldn't get over what my aunt said. So at the end of it, I ended up packing a suitcase and moving out for like four days because of what my aunt said to me. And that was the time I got Pam high. That was the time I got my mother high. Okay. Uh, okay, favorite and least favorite uh, Christmas carols or songs? Um, boy, I don't know. I mean, I really have a soft spot for Christmas carols and Christmas music. I really do. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, there's just some that, I mean, there's a lot of God in them, you know? So sometimes, like, you'll be singing the ones, and you'll just be like, wait a second. Hold on. This is about God, is it? You know, you're, like, being indoctrinated accidentally. Um, so anyone's with too much of that, you know, you know, which one I don't like deck the halls. It's just like, Jesus Christ, the fa la 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 la's, right? Just like this per, I mean, yeah, deck the halls with boughs of holly, fa la 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 la. And then the person was like, and that comes after every line in the song. Fa la 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 la, fa la 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 la. La. It's just like, oh, shut the fuck up. Little Drummer Boy is also a really weird one, you know? I can't even remember how that one goes right now, but it's always like, brum, 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 you know, real weird. Uh, favorite songs, I like Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. I like White Christmas. Um, I like, uh, there's a lot I like. The problem is that a lot of these have been covered and they get a little weird at times. Like, I love Christmas carols, but I find it weird when, like, popular musicians sing songs about Santa. Like, to me, that's just kind of fucking odd, you know? It's like they're grown-ups. They know it's not real, you know? Like, like I, I don't mind, like, some artists singing, like, Christmas songs, but, like, uh, like, Bruce Springsteen singing Santa Claus is Coming to Town. So impassioned. Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. It's like, Bruce, you are 65 years old. Do you, what are you doing? You know, Michael Jackson in the Jackson 5, he's a child. He sings that. Okay. Bruce Springsteen, Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming. It's like, what the fuck? Dude, you are, <laughs> you're Santa's age. What are you talking about? You know? And then another song we got to put on the least favorite is Baby, It's Cold Outside. A song about a potential uh, sexual assault, right? I mean, that song is all about a woman trying to leave and Dean Martin being like, no, I don't think so, right? I really can't stay, but baby, it's cold outside. Like, baby, it's cold outside. The lyrics should just be translated to, nah, you're going to fuck me, you know? I really can't stay. Nah, you're going to fuck me. It's really cold out there. Nah, you're going to fuck me. What will they think? Yeah, you're going to fuck me. You know, baby, you're going to fuck me. Like, it's just, it's crazy. It's a very, like, it's really, really creepy. I remember I tried to do stand-up on it a few years ago, and nobody was on board. And then recently, people seemed to go, yeah, it is crazy. But I was ahead of the curb. That song is a, a it's disgusting. 
right? Uh, maybe I'll sneak out the window. Nah, you're going to fuck me. Maybe I'll just hail a cab. Nah, you're going to fuck me. Maybe I'll just run through the wall. Nah, you're going to fuck me. I really should go. Nah, you're going to fuck me. Sorry, just the way it is. You're going to fuck me. I'm dating someone. Nah, you're going to fuck me. Baby, it's cold outside. Okay. Um... Oh, this is a good one. When someone at your table is rude and or annoying to the waiter or waitress. Yeah. That is the worst. Um, I mean, you can always tell people who've worked service jobs and people who haven't. You know, people who've never worked service jobs go into a restaurant and say stuff like, oh, it's taking forever. Oh, where's our waiter? Oh, I don't like my soup. You know, whereas people who have worked in the service industry understand these are people who are at their jobs. Restaurants are what they are. They are unpredictable experiences, and everyone is probably trying their best. And if you didn't have a good experience, then guess what? Just chalk it up to karma. Something happened. You did something wrong. Now you're going to have a shitty time at a restaurant. But there's nothing worse than when someone directly to the waiter or waitress, you know? I I'm sorry. I really didn't like mine. I'm like, what are you? You didn't like? Then you fucked up. You fucked it up. You know what you like. You fucked up. Don't blame this person. What are you doing? I, I don't think I'd like it. Would you like to try something else? No, I'm good. It's like, oh, my God, you know. Or sometimes you go out to a meal, and the person is the payer, and they're going to pay, but you don't know how they tip, and you can sometimes see how they tip, and it's terrible. I don't know if you've ever done this. You ever done the walk back? You ever gotten a look at, like, a $25 bill? You know, someone just picked up breakfast couple plates of eggs and hash browns and coffee, $25, $20, whatever. That person picks it up, leaves $2, and you're just like, no. So you do what you have to do. You're like, all right, I'll see you later, Ted. Bye. I'm going to walk this way. And then you go back in and just lay a fin down. Like, sorry. You know, I've done that before. It's, it's a bad reflection because, you know, I mean, you got to like, you got to have some understanding of the fact that people are working. That's like, you can't just don't be dicks. I mean, look, you got to be a dick sometimes. Sometimes a company puts you in a position where they're screwing you over, and this employee is the liaison, and you have no choice but to kind of vent your frustrations. I'm thinking of, like, airports. But when you're on a plane, the it's not the flight attendant's fault. It's not the pilot's fault. You know, shit happens. You entered, a, you entered the game called life. You're going to lose some shit. I mean, that's just going to happen. You're going to have shitty moments. What you need to do is figure out a way to store up the strength to get through the little bullshit so that when the big bullshit comes, you're fucking ready. And you go, now I'm going to explode, right? But yeah, you cannot like just be a jerk off to people. And, when they, and it really shows your true colors. I would never be able to go out with someone who was a dick to a waiter or a waitress. I have friends who have grown up rich their whole lives. They can still be very sweet and understanding to waiters and waitresses. So, you know, you've got to just... You've got to find a way to be cool. you got to be cool, you know, and do not take it out on these people. I, I mean, again, I've worked in enough restaurants to know that it, it is what it is. It is what it is, okay? It is what it is. You're lucky. You can afford to go have a meal. And times like this should really remind us of that. That, that. When the world comes back, nobody should ever be a dick to anyone who works at a grocery store or a restaurant or a hospital or a doctor's office or any of these industries right now that are getting fucked because of the time and having to work so much. Let's remember this. Let's remember when the world comes back and a sixth of our restaurants are closed. And when we go back out, let's remember that these people we miss the whole time. And that even if your fucking food arrives cold, or even if your food's not good, or if your waiter forgets the drink, or if the waitress gives you a look, who gives a shit? You're lucky. You're lucky. You're lucky. You're lucky to be a human. You're lucky to be engaged in the human experience. So enjoy it. And if you do get pissed, it's okay. Check yourself. You can always take it back and leave good tips. 18% is standard. Kick it up. Come on, if you can. All right. All right. Um, what TV show from 1980 to now would you most like to be inserted in as a character, not actor? Charles in Charge, because I want to beat the shit out of Scott Baio, okay? Because Scott Baio thinks he's better than me, and he's not. Um, no, I'm trying to think. Uh, Alf, Alf would have been great for me. I would have fit right in an Alf's world. Uh, Alf would have been a really good one. You know, Alf and I just kicking it. That was late 80s. Um, what other ones would I be inserted? Uh, well, I guess that wasn't 80s. I'm trying to think of 80s shows. Um, 
what else did I like in the 80s? Yeah, I guess ALF would be my number one. ALF would be my number one. And then, yeah, I think, I think most of the ones I'm thinking of are 90s. So I will say ALF. ALF would be the show. Hey, it's me, ALF. I love it. Hey, Willie. Ha ha. You know, I would be down for that action. Me and ALF hanging out, you know. Hey, Gareth, can I ask you a question? Yeah, ALF, what's going on? Do you think we should do something damaging this evening? I sure do, ALF. Ha! Let's do it! You know? Only thing, no cats. We would not be eating cats. But, uh, but that was it. Um, what did you study in college? Uh, drinking and uh, light drug use. Um, in college, I went, to, I went to school for theater. So I have an uh, a acting degree. And it's an acting degree because an acting degree acts like it's a degree. In reality, it's not much. Uh, it just appears to be a degree. And then when you go, what do you do? It goes, ah, nothing, I'm just an actor. I, I don't have shit. Um, but that was what I studied in college. I studied acting. But I really, that's where I really started to uh, learn how to write sketches and you know, do improv and all that other shit. Um, so that was what I studied in college. Uh, exchanging Christmas gifts in a new relationship. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things when you're in a new relationship around a holiday, or around a birthday, where you just go so fucking big, you know? You're like, I love Casey so much, I need to show her, you know? And you just kitchen sink them, right? You just do all the stuff. I mean, I remember, but that's the problem, is you just, remember this, okay? If you're engaging in a new relationship around a holiday, and you think it's going to last forever, remember how long that is. Set the bar low, right? Don't start off huge. Don't get a fucking limousine and then a bunch of, you know, holly and deck the insides of limo with the boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. You know, don't bother, right? No need to get like, you know, uh, Williams Sonoma gift cards or, you know, free massages or what, you know, just temper it. Temper it, you know? Give something small. If you, you, this is the only time that you're going to be able to give a shit gift and get away with it just because you're like, but baby, I love you. Our love is so new. I know. I forgive you. Right? You're not going to get that in 10 years when you're just like, yeah, they're socks. Like, they're socks? They're socks? Why wouldn't you suck my dick, Carl? You're like, wait, hold on. You know? They're just like, so maybe start low, you know? Just this first, this Christmas, socks. Just give them some socks. Right? Darcy, here you go. Here are some socks. Oh, socks. <laughs> I guess he's just not good at giving gifts, but it's a new relationship, so I love him. Well, guess what you got the rest of your life? A pass to give mediocre gifts, and then a good gift sets you into a new stratosphere. You know? Get a pair of shoes and a bracelet. Oh, my God. Carl got me shoes and a bracelet. He really does love me because the first time he got me socks. Right? Huh? Think ahead. Strategize. Long term. A lot of people think relationships are about honesty. They're not. It's gamesmanship, outsmarting your opponent, a.k.a. your partner, okay? Beating them, besting them, setting yourself up for the easiest life possible. Huh? All right? Wonder why I'm single? Huh? Single? Why am I single? I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I feel better. How's everyone else feel good? Good. Woo. Good to cry. Laugh. Uh, oh, portfolio headshots. Now, okay, portfolio headshots... I, uh, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm guessing those are the quad shots where you, you have four different looks, which are my favorite type of headshot. Like headshots now, it's just one picture. I mean, you barely even have headshots anymore, but, but you, you know, you do, and it's just one picture. But what they used to do in probably the eighties or something was they would have four looks. So you would just do four weird looks. Right? Like, instead of showing up to the audition as a doctor, they were like, let's see him as a doctor in his headshot. 
So one of your headshots would be a doctor. You know, you'd have a stethoscope like, oh, I can listen to patients. And then another one would be like a construction worker. You'd be like, hey, I can also play a guy who works on a work site. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, look, I work on construction now. And then another one would be a pirate where you'd be like, ah, but I also can pretend I'm on the seven seas. Ah, you know. And then the last one would just be like a tennis player. Like, I also do athletics, as you can see illustrated from my proper form on this tennis picture. And it would just be four quads. And you would just have the casting people would be like, yeah, but can he do Shakespeare? I don't see him holding any skulls in this. And they'd be like, I don't think he can because he's not holding any skulls in this, you know. But he taking headshots is one of the most painful experiences. Pictures in general, painful experiences. For me, I, I despise it. I just want it over with, you know? You're just sitting there. That's good. That's good. Maybe a little more intense. That's great. Look off to your right. Not that far. A little less. Split the difference. That's great. Okay? Great, great, you know? And then they have people coming over and putting makeup on you and touching you. You know, touch always. There's always someone who comes up to you and just touches you, just, you know, feels the freedom, just kind of flick your eye because they work there. You're like, I don't know you. Ow, my eyeball. Um, but I think that's what portfolio headshots were. Uh, I believe were the quads, and so they were great. They were great. I hopefully will never take headshots again. Um, okay, every uh, everything is shut down, but people can still go to Walmart. Yeah, look, the rules are fucking dumb. They have just fucked up the rules. Whatever the rules are, I don't know what they are, but they have just totally fucked it up. I mean, they, you know, they just never thought <laughs> it through properly. You know, like there's just and again, like everything else in this uh, system that we live under, it seems like, um, you know, if you're rich, you get special privileges. And if you're not, then you're just lumped in with the rest of humans is yeah, you have rules that you better abide by. And if not, you're going to get in a lot of trouble, you know. So, yeah, it makes no sense. You know, it makes no sense. I mean, even on a state level, state to state, it's like, why are the rules in this state so different to this state, you know? But they they just have fucked it all up. They they should if they had been paying people to stay home and be safe, this country would be in a much better position. Instead, yeah, we live in what we live in now, where they're like, please stay home for another few months while we don't give you shit. You know, even now they're gonna come up with the new stimulus and they're gonna pass it probably, but it's only gonna result in like another six to twelve hundred dollars. I mean, so you take the you know take the money that they gave you. The $1,200 they gave you from, like, July or whatever, like, that, you know, so they basically gave you, like, $200 a month. And what world does $200 a month do shit anywhere? Like, there's probably a few cities where $200 actually does do something. But most places, $200 doesn't do shit. And if you have kids and you have a partner and you have a home and you have a mortgage and you have a car, you know, internet, like, we've just, look, I mean, we, we expect to be a society where people are able to do the, the things that they want to do. And if they don't, then, you know, that's the, then we need to come up with a system that, it, that gives people fairness. And one where you can't go anywhere, one where a restaurant can't be open outdoors, but a Walmart can be open, makes no goddamn sense, right? Meanwhile, Amazon is just so fucking real. I can't do this. I'm sorry. I got to stop. Um, holiday traditions in England you wish we did here. Um... Well, Christmas crackers, I was talking about that. Christmas crackers, where you, you have a Christmas cracker, you would crack the Christmas cracker, and then inside would be a little crown, and then a joke, and a toy, a gift. And it was great. It was a great experience. I uh, loved it. Loved it so much. Um, you know, you'd get the Christmas cracker, and then you'd wear a crown for the rest of the night. Um, other England traditions... Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I honestly have not spent enough Christmases here to really even know what the hell goes on here. But I know England does it better. Yorkshire puddings. Oh, Yorkshire puddings are pretty much like butter and fat. And man, that science works. That is solid. It's just like this little rising cup. It's like it's like a dessert bread you eat with your meal. You just l cover it in gravy. It's it's just it's fickle. It do does not have a thick pastried wall. It's just very simple. It's, it's like nothing. It's like eating cotton candy, the bread. But somehow it works. Um, 
and then stabbing your neighbor. Uh, every Christmas in England, you are allowed to try to stab your neighbor, and if he stops you or she stops you, then you just laugh about it, and if you get him, no laws can come after you. So it would be Christmas crackers, Yorkshire puddings, and the ability to stab your neighbors, uh, law, you know, without the law getting involved. Um, getting the birds and bees talk. I feel like we went over this at some point here. Um, yeah, I don't even remember... I don't even remember getting it. I mean, not in any way other than... I think I told this story before, but... I was six or seven. Is my dad here tonight? He said he might stop by. Is he here? Uh, I don't know if he's here. Yeah. All right. Peter might not be here. Peter might just be watching. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I was the 4th of July. I was at the Milwaukee Lakefront, and um, my... Uh, my father and my mother, and we had a group of friends, and I was just riffing. This is young Gareth's where I would just be talking some shit. I didn't even know what I was saying. And I said, yeah, because the guy has sex with the woman, and then blah, blah, blah. And my dad goes, do you know what sex is? And I go, yeah, it's where the guy puts his penis in the lady's butt, and he pees. So I thought it was when the man puts his penis in the woman's butt, and he pees. And everybody laughed, and I was like, ha, 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 what a droll child I am. Well, meanwhile, my father locked on me, and he goes, I need to talk to you. And I was like, oh, shit. So I get taken over there, and he goes, you know, that's not what sex is. I was like six or seven. I was like, okay. He's like, sex is actually beautiful. I was like, okay, can I go back to the people over there who are not you? And he's like, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I was like, okay, I'm good. I guess the guy doesn't put his penis in the lady's butt and he pees. I guess it's done differently. And he goes, you know, it's actually when the penis goes into the vagina. I was like, can I get the check whenever you're ready? I'd love to get the fuck out of this conversation as soon as possible. And he goes, and it's magical. And the man is inside the woman. And then he ejaculates. And then you can get a baby. I was like, I don't feel good. The hot dogs I had from earlier aren't agreeing with me. And this topic of conversation sure ain't helping shit. And he was like, and it's wonderful. And right in the back, fireworks are going off. Like I said, 4th of July. And my dad takes me in his arm, and he looks at me, and he goes, you know, sex is a lot like fireworks. And I was like, bleh, and I threw up all over everybody. No, I didn't throw up. But, uh, but it was crazy. I was like, okay, you know. And then I just for years kept thinking about fireworks. And then I told my brother, I'm like, dad said that sex is fireworks. And my brother couldn't get over it. He just lost his shit. Every time I'd say fireworks, he would lose his mind. It was Pavlovian. You know, I'd say fireworks, Nick would laugh. But, uh, but that was the birds and the bees talk. You know, that's the talk we had. So it was super fucking awkward. Super fucking awkward. Uh, night pants? What? What are night pants? Did I talk about this? Have we talked about this before? I don't know what night pants are. What are night pants? Anyone know what night pants are? Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what night pants are, unfortunately. Uh, I would imagine pants you wear at night. Are they special? Do they have something? Do they, are they, do they have moons and stars? I got no idea. I don't know what night pants are. Sorry. Okay. Bodybuilder competitions. Yeah, so weird, right? Just the weirdest, weirdest thing. Like, I get wanting to be in shape, but on that level where your life is that, you know, and you got to hold those positions, the awkwardness of them holding those positions. Right? And they're just in, they're, they're in like thongs, right? Men and women. It's weird. Like, men lift so much their dicks vanish, and women lift so much their boobs go away. It's like you are, you're, you're taking away your genitalia. What are you doing? Stop lifting so goddamn much, you know? They always have those pimples on from taking so many steroids, you know? They're just roy And why do, we, why do they have to be so brown? Like, it's borderline a race issue a lot of times. You'll see a guy who's got my complexion, and then he'll hit the stage, and he's just like... You know, he's just bronzed. He looks like the Oscar. He just walks out. He's like, how are you? 
hi, how's everyone doing? And the teeth are just like, bing, 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 right? Just looks so fucking insane. Just like, hi, ah, titties, 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 my titties, my pecs, my titties. And have you ever held those positions? It's not, it doesn't feel good, right? Try to fully flex yourself. Oh, it's like tiring. You're like, I can't do it. So it's weird. And then what do you win? A fucking trophy? Is that worth it? Is that you did all that just to be like, that's the thing I can't eat pasta because of. Look at that, you know? They just look so fucking crazy. And then people, you know, I mean, what do you do if you it gets hard to support someone in that, you know? Good match out there. You really are strong when you flex your your tits or your penis is your butt's very you got no your abs are so, why are you so brown? What happened to you backstage? Are you okay? Did you fall in some liquid? What happened to you? You do not look right, you know? Uh, oh, re-gifting. Um, yeah, re-gifting. Well, look, it depends what you're doing. If you are straight up re-gifting and there's no irony and you're not leaning into it in any way, I don't know if I love it, you know? My brother's wife, my sister-in-law, always would re-gift, but she would tell me. So I'd be like, I don't like macadamias. And she'd be like, oh, well, I'll try someone else, you know. But, uh, but yeah, it's kind of shady, but it's also like, look, if it works, right? If you get something someone else wants, give it to them. That's the real secret Santa, right? Shell game behind the scenes, right? Fucking making moves, all that shit. Yeah, I can get behind that kind of re-gifting. I like that. Uh, okay. Worst birthday, Christmas, New Year's, or 9-11? Oh, shit. Um, I, it's hard. I mean, look, it's hard for me because I don't give a shit about my birthday. I would think the 9-11 birthday is just kind of weird because it's not like a celebratory day, right? Nobody's like, come on, we're going to the bar for 9-11. Woo! You know? Like, and you could kind of just you know, co-op some of that heat, you know? Not only is it 9-11, but it's also my birthday. Oh, my God, it's Gus's birthday and 9-11. We got so much celebrating to do, you know? None of that, no, right? Christmas, people are celebrating. New Year's, people are celebrating. Granted, you're not going to be able to get your piece of the pie on New Year's, you know? People are like, it's the New Year, anything's possible. You're like, it's also my birthday. They're like, I don't give a fuck about you, Right? But like if it if if it's you know, if it's nine eleven, it's like, man, such a bad day. Like so much was lost that day. Like, yeah. Do you want some cake? Huh? Do you want some cake for nine eleven? No, it's also my thirty fifth birthday. Oh. I don't know if I feel right eating cake on nine eleven. Oh. Um, okay. <laughs> It's just that it is my birthday. Yeah, but I wouldn't feel right eating cake today. Uh, if I eat cake today, the terrorists win. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> FaceTiming Jose when you go away. Uh, yeah, I mean, I do. Dogs pay more attention. Dogs, at least, you'll be like, you know, you could just be like, hey, Gus, hey, Gus, and the dog's like, Gus? Gus is my name. Gus, Gus, who said that? Gus, it's me. I hear a voice for Gus, but nobody's here. You know, cats aren't like that. Cats are like, hey, Jose, and he's just like, hey, Jose. You're like, hey, Jose, and then it's anus. Then it's right into butthole, right? Right into butthole, right after it's butthole. So, you know, it's hard. You can't, I mean, they don't get it. If we could, I'll tell you what, you want to make an app that people will go nuts for, FaceTiming your animals. Right? I would love that. I would love to just be able to talk to them on the phone. You know? Just every now and then, just check in. Everything good there? <coughs> yeah, you sure? <coughs> what do you mean? Who was it? <coughs> oh, that's probably just FedEx. They were probably just leaving something. <coughs> Okay. Well, did you see, why are you watching any birds? <laughs> you are. Okay. What are they doing? <laughs> oh, they're eating bird seed. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, did you eat your chicken? <laughs> oh, not yet. It's the little paste. <laughs> did your feeder go off? <laughs> All right. It'll go off. Relax. <laughs> All right. Chill out. It'll go off. All right. I'll be home around seven. <laughs> All right. Meow meow too. Bye bye, baby. You know. I would love that. That's that. You'd make a lot of goddamn money there. 
Um, oh, wow. What's it like to do ayahuasca? <laughs> Uh, it's fucking nuts. It's, uh, it's, uh, great. Um, you know, not for everybody, but if you feel the calling, then I think it's a good thing to do. Um, it kind of just is like, uh, if you picture your brain or your existence like a sponge over the course of time, you just get kind of damp and you have a lot of dirt in you. I think ayahuasca is a good ring out, just rings you out. You feel refreshed. You feel new neuroplasticity sticks to you for a while, so you're thinking very positive thoughts. You're on a positive track. Um, it, it cha- I mean, it, I, I haven't met a lot of people whose lives it hasn't changed when they've done it. It uh, completely changed my life in many ways. So, uh, yeah, it's nuts, though. You leave your body. You forget you have a body. You know, you're having, like, uh, intense communication in, it, in, the, in many, many different realms. It's nuts. I mean, listen to what I just said. It's fucking bananas. But it's great. I love it. I miss it. Uh, okay. Squirrels who hang out in dog parks. Uh, I didn't know if there were I didn't know there were a lot of squirrels. I don't go to dog parks, you know. Being in a dog park without a dog is sort of like being at the playground without a kid. People are like, you're trying to bang them, aren't you? You know? So it, it's it's a little strange. So I've never I've never really hung out in dog parks. I wish they had cat parks. I would be all over that shit. Um but, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess they're just there for a kick, you know? They just like seeing the dogs, like hanging, kicking it with the doggies. Uh, it seems like they're pro- they probably have some problems, right? They're probably a little off. Um, I, but, I mean, I, I have a real affinity for squirrels. I've told this on this show before, but I had a squirrel in the Boston Common come up and stand on my leg when I was eating lunch in the park. I was like, this dude is, what is his deal? You know, and he was just like, nom, 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 nom. and then he just took off, you know. You know how squirrels' attention spans are. By the way, every time I see a squirrel trying to cross, they're like, you think you know fear? Imagine trying to cross the goddamn road as a squirrel. I think that all the time. I'm like, this, this, this thing deserves the Medal of Freedom, you know? Like a four-lane street for a squirrel, it's just, that's got to be crazy. That's got to be me going like, ah, they call her Everest. And I shall make it to her summit. For a squirrel that's like, I'm going to go to that side. You know, it's just like fucking nuts. You know, and they love nuts. So that must be the tie-in. Um, but yeah, I don't, I'm not familiar with a ton of squirrels who are kicking in dog parks. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, this is the last one. Um, why is it when you move, you pack and pack, and more shit keeps popping up, and it seems to never end. Yeah, that is the nature of it. You can pack. Well, I mean, the truth is that you can only pack so much. So you're trying, you're trying to do this whittling down, right? You've got like probably 75 percent of your shit you don't really need. So two weeks leading up to the move, you can box that 75 percent of shit and get rid of it. Then you got your core 25 percent. You're like, I'm gonna need you until the last few days, right? But then what you I think it's that you don't remember how much shit you need to actually need. Like you need a mattress, you know, like you kind of need a TV or like something to watch something on. You need a cup, you need a pot, you need a spoon, you need a pan, you need a plate. You know, you need those things. You need toilet paper. You need something to shower with. You need a towel, you know. And so you just don't remember. And then at the end of it, it's this mad dash where you're like, I've packed everything. And when everything's packed, you're still like, right, I need the broom and the dustpan to clean up. I got to put that away. You know, I need the Windex. I got to put that away. My towel, my cup, my knife, my fork, you know, all that shit. It just kind of piles up. And that's why, like, the move is very organized for the, for the first 20 boxes, 40 boxes, whatever it is, fucking organized. Label books, you know, fragile curtains, you know, whatever it is, bedding. It's just all labeled. And then the last three trips are just plastic bags with like shower curtains and like kebab skewers and just like a shoe. And there's like a parrot in one of them. And you're just walking out in like lady footlocker bags. You don't know how you had, you know, until eventually you're just walking out with armfuls of shit, just like these are soaps. And you're just throwing them in the back of the truck. You know, so it's meticulous, and then at the end, you're like, fuck it, I don't want to live anymore. You know, and it's just all this bullshit. You're like, eh, eh, I don't know. Um, But that's the nature of it, you know? And then it's the same thing when you get there, too, you know? 
All your meticulous stuff, and then you're like, and then we need to do 30 trips to pick up change. There's a lot of change in the truck. Um, okay, that was the last suggestion. Thank you for joining me. Let's figure out which one was Ryan Sickler's this week. Um, edibles would be a good one for him. 1980s sitcom for TV was good. Uh, everything shut down. Walmart, I could see him doing. Uh, bodybuilder's good. I think he might do bodybuilder. I'm going to guess that Ryan was either bodybuilder or edibles. I'm going to guess that Ryan was bodybuilders. That's my guess. Ryan's suggestion was night pants. I don't even know what the fuck they are. What are they? Hold on. We got to do him right. Hold on. Let's see here. Let's see what night pants are. What are night pants? Night pants. Night pants. What are they? Oh, they're pajamas. Oh, night pants. I, yeah, I live in night. But the problem with night pants is I, I live in night pants. Night pants. So the pants you wear at night, those are my day pants. Those are my only pants. I don't have day pants. I used to have day pants like five years ago, and I had some day pants before the pandemic. But now that it's pandemic time, I'm night pants all the time. I'm either no pants or night pants. There's no middle ground. Night pants are, I'm, I'm way into night pants, but they should be everything. Who gives a fuck what you look like anymore, right? I mean, we all have masks on our face. It's anonymous. It doesn't matter anymore. You could just go anywhere in your night pants at any time. You have a mask on. But you wear goggles if you want to. Shit, you could fucking walk into places dressed like the masked singer. Nobody gives a shit, right? It's, it's all bets are off. This is not the time for fucking. Nobody cares. Dress, wear whatever you want. So I rock pajama pants in daylight. That's how, I, that's how you got to roll. Those are night pants. So yes, Ryan, I'm pro night pants. By the way, Sickler is too. Sickler and I dress very similarly, right? It's for comfort. It's not, we're not looking to like, you know, I'm not looking to go to Vons and get laid. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm just there to get like vegan eggnog ingredients. So yeah, big into night pants. Uh, thank you to Ryan Sickler for his suggestion. Uh, like I said, um, Ryan is awesome. Follow him at Ryan Sickler. Uh, let me say this before I go. There's gonna, I'm not, I'm gonna take a couple weeks away. Um, so there will be no Gariffs next week, and I think there probably won't be one the following week either. We'll have a little break. Uh, I apologize if that makes anyone upset, but uh, when we come back, I'm also pretty sure I'm gonna also stream it on Instagram. So if we run into these uh, feed problems again, you could just go to Instagram. So I'll probably have it up on Instagram and on YouTube, and you guys can watch wherever at your leisure. Um, but, uh, yeah, next week is Christmas, so there'll be, uh, there'll be no one next week. And then I think even the following week there won't be one. So that'll be two weeks away from Gareth's, unfortunately. Um, I, uh, I apologize. Uh, I hope that's okay. Yeah, you'll be all right. Um, so, yeah, so come back, come back after that. Uh, and like I said, later tonight at, um, at nightlight.tv, or like now, honestly, you can watch a show now, I think, uh, nightlight.tv, go there. And am I forgetting anything? Nope, I think that's everything. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, wait, one more thing. We've got a date with a cat named Destiny. There we go. There he is. There he is. The cutest cat in the biz. My little guy, he's not a high. He's just a tired and not a wired cause I woke him up on the bed. He was on the bed. He's normally in the box, but this time bed instead. That's right, he was on the bed. He's normally in the box. This cat of mine, he does rocks. And look at him now, he's fine. He's my boy. He's my bed boy. He's my sweet boy who likes to lay upon the bed instead of the box that rocks. 
It looks like he's getting sick. Look at his paw. Sucks. He's tolerating. And he's sort of hating. And he's probably debating the hair in the sky. We don't ask why. We're going to hang out. Oh, we're not going to be upset. No, we love each other. We love it here. This is what we do. We're not going to end it until I say we can. So here we am. Look at this posture. It leaves a lot to be desired. Jose, you're fired. I'm just kidding, rehired. You're the best in the biz. I don't know what this is. Hey, look, Tommy Jones <laughs> gave us 20 bucks. I don't know much him about him, but I'm pretty sure he fucks. Okay. Woo! We did it, buddy. Sorry to wake you up from the bed. Um, all right, gang. We did it. I will, uh, I'll see you all in the new year. Appreciate it. I'll see you later tonight if you want. And then, uh, I think that's everything. So, have, uh, as good of a holiday as you can. Like I uh, try to impart, this is, uh, bullshit, uh, the way that the world is right now. Hang in there. Uh, if you need anything... You can always reach out to me in some capacity. Let me know you need me to tell you that I love you, something like that, or you need anything, whatever, affirmation, I'm here. So uh, I hope everybody's all right. Hang in there. His name is it, uh, it can only get better. Okay, love to all, and to all, a good love. <laughs>